Welcome to Show Chic Shop Talk, learning with the stars. Today on Shop Talk, horse behavioralist Linda Pirelli and sports psychologist Dr. Jenny Susser. Okay, I need two volunteers. Okay, could I get you to just step outside for a minute? Okay, Laurie, here's the deal. Do we have uh, like an empty water bottle? You could arrange for that out. Here, just need an empty one. It's it's big big oh, we this got is... one. We got one. <coughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. All right, when Cynthia comes back in. All we're going to say to her is, you know, hi, Cynthia, um, just do the best you can, okay? That's all we're going to say. Okay. I'm okay. going to say that? Yeah. Well, I'll say it too. Okay. All right. And then we're going to give her three tasks to do, all right? So let's think of something. She's going to sit in a chair, that chair, not this one. She's going to shake your hand, okay? And then she has to... Mm, Pick up the water bottle. On the ground. Yeah, you got that very well. All right. You can use no language. You can't use your words. You cannot demonstrate. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that to your horse? Like, look, just jump this. <laughs> it's not gonna work, right? So you can't use anything like that. All you have is this little bottle. And if she doesn't do what you want, then you tap her. <laughs> Because you can't point, you can't make, you can't, have you ever seen people take a horse into the trailer, like one foot at a time? <laughs> can't do that. Okay, so you got it? Yeah. She's going to sit in that chair. Bring her in. Shake her hand. And pick up. So, just put the question. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Come on in. Okay, cool. Come on, give her a big hand. Nice to meet you. And uh, I just want you to do the best you can, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, where are you from? You're not allowed to talk. Oh, I'm not allowed to talk. That's hard. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> where she was going with it. I yeah, was you were trying, trying to get her to come <laughs> with me, but wasn't really sure what the exercise was. That so made it a little bit different. I was difficult. I was trying to get her to come with me or join up, so to speak, you know, yeah. be with me, yeah. not not attack me. <laughs> you know, I wasn't understanding why she was trying to hit me. So that was the only part I didn't get. I'm like, I'm not sure where we're going here. Ah, I thought you were going to kick and strike me. Well, well, that yeah. was the next one. Yeah. Okay, Cynthia, so you, you stay here. Thank you, Laurie. Okay. So, um, how many of you felt the pain of that? <laughs> it's like I can't talk, I can't tell my horse, I can't demonstrate to my horse. You know, look, just... Alright, so how do we build a language with a horse that doesn't speak English? We have seven things that we teach people to do with horses. Horses already know this. They use this body language. They do it with each other. But what we have to do is learn how to communicate with the horse. It's 
in its language, which is body language. So the first thing is to make sure, and we call it the seven games, and it's the seven games that horses play with each other. One is for trust and friendship, and the other six are for dominance, right, or moving other horses around. And so in the human world, uh, you know, some of us think dominance is, is not a very nice word, you know, and we dominate people, but that's how horses live. And we're going to call it leadership, but basically you need to be seen as alpha for your horse. The first one is what we call a friendly game, which is to show a horse that no matter what we look like, what we smell like, how we act, yes, we are a predator, that we would never hurt or kill them even though we could. And we have to prove that to the horse beyond any shadow of doubt. And there's several ways to do that. The second game is the game of pressure and release. So if I put pressure on my horse with my fingertips, as an example, does my horse push into it like she did? Right? Or does she yield, or does my horse yield from it? So the third one is to then use gestures, like suggestions of what you should do. So they're the first three primary games that we teach to communicate with horses. And I put you in a situation like a horse where you have no idea, and I remove the language that we can use with each other so that then we start to learn how we communicate through body language. It's exactly what we do with horses. And then there's formal games that now are kind of combinations of the first three. This is about practical communication like horses do with each other. So they know who's who in the zoo, you can establish relationships with them based on trust and respect. Dr. Jenny. <laughs> it's really about languaging, mm. right? And if we think about our human relationships, we go through a lot of the same things. How many of you have teenagers? Or have a teenager? Or have ever seen a teenager? <laughs> it's really creating language. And how many of you say the same thing over and over again in a conversation with people? <laughs> I mean, and I do it when I ride, too. You know, I'll be riding around, and, okay, shoulder in, okay, this with my left leg, this with my right leg, this with my left hand, this with my right hand, okay, why aren't you shouldering in, horse? <laughs> All right, let me try that again, because this should work. <laughs> right? It's that whole definition of insanity where we do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And we don't think, okay, well, perhaps it's my communication skills that are not being effective enough. And that takes a certain amount of emotional fitness and awareness on our part to be able to go, hey, wow, gosh, what I'm doing isn't exactly working. What should I do? What can I do? What, what could I do differently? What could I do more of? What could I maybe do less of? And what would work for my horse? And that's the coolest thing about the emotional fitness and reading the horse is being able, the Pirelli personality system creates, it is a system for how to read your horse. Like, I, you know, like, I'm really good at reading people. You know, like, I can meet somebody, I bet Laura, you're pretty good at reading people, would you say? Right, you can meet people and you're like, oh, okay, I know exactly how to deal with them. Yeah. Right, and, and most people don't, but we are trained professionals. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I, I like, I, so I know when to be forceful, I know when to not be forceful, right? I, I, you kind of, and you kind of learn this with people. Anybody have a certain personality type that they just hate dealing with? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, you can read that much, right? But horses have differences too. Horses, some horses are extroverted, some horses are introverted. <laughs> so, how, you know, so what about reading a horse that way? You know, I'm an adult amateur rider that doesn't compete and I horseback riding is a passion and it is not a priority so I don't ride every day my work is my priority right now that's where I spend most of my time so when I do get to be with my horse it's really cool and it's really fun but I don't have the kind of time that professionals or serious amateurs put into it so I've got to be good in the five minutes that I have with my horse <laughs> And I'll tell you, learning to read my horse and knowing what strategies work based on how my horse thinks has made me good with my horse, like I'm good with people. I just wanted to say something about, we're sure. talking about language, um, and then leadership is the next thing that um, when I first started studying with Pat, I went, oh my God, this is like, I've got to really change. My horse was fine until I showed up. Evidently, I'm bringing out the worst side of my horse. 
And um, it was like a personal development seminar. And I said to him, wow, well, really what you're doing is personal development. That's how we should promote this. And I realized nobody would show up. Because they're all getting, you know, we're all kind of like, well, I'm fine. My horse is the problem. So, you know, we need to learn about what our system does is teach people how to use love, language, and leadership in equal doses. Because some people just use love, 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 and more love, and nothing ever really happens. And other people just use language, 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 leadership, 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 leadership. But you've got to have all three of them, because if you've got all three, then you'll lead with your heart, and you'll have language by which you can communicate with the horse. If you don't have a language, you've got what poor Lori and Cynthia had, you know? And it's not like they're not intelligent people. But they're just handicapped when there's no way to communicate. So when we can put that piece in there, and, and you suddenly have a much easier time. You don't get so frustrated because you realize my horse just doesn't understand. He's not just trying to defeat me. Well, some are, but it's still no. Seriously, um, when you have that kind of a left brain extroverted horse, or even a left brain introverted horse, they're natural leaders. They're not looking for a leader. They are one. Whereas, you know, the right brain horses are looking for a leader. So if you have a right brain horse, which is more of a fearful, insecure horse, then you need to be the right kind of leader and help them feel safe and then take them and them, you know, teach them what you want. Then how do we create horses that are emotionally strong, emotionally healthy, emotionally balanced? Do we think about that? And we decided, we decided for the world that we don't. And we don't think about that enough that we should, and for sure that we could, and that it's stuff that we can go to work on. And that's what Linda and I have been scheming about for the last couple of years, and now taking to the court. And we're finding some pretty good success, and help them change, help them become more emotionally fit. And that's, that's what we're up to. What we have is this great frontal lobe, which separates us from all of the other sentient beings, right? Not just in terms of languaging, but in terms of abstract thinking. So I call this frontal lobe the MSU portion of our brain, which stands for making stuff up. It's the make stuff up portion of the brain. Right? We can use a different S word when we're not in the other realm. But we can make stuff up. We have the capacity to have abstract thoughts, which horses don't. Horses don't look at something, like this morning I said, horses don't look at the horse trailer and go, hmm, might that be a traveling hay wagon or a death trap? <laughs> it's a metal cave on wheels because last time it scared the bejesus out of you. That's what horses say, right? So horses, because they have a cerebral cord, they work in patterns. And they're very trainable patterns. And sometimes we train the good patterns and sometimes we train the bad patterns but we're always trained in a pattern, and horses survive based on patterns. So do we. But because we've got the MSU portion of the brain, we can think ourselves out of that, or so we think. You want to start to train the way that you want to compete. And most of us train haphazardly and without an ounce of mindfulness. We don't bring our brains to the barn. As we're training, you want to bring your mind to every time you ride, so that it becomes sharper and stronger. It is a muscle. All of those things are muscles. Patience, gratitude, focus. Being emotionally fit means being able to handle emotional pressure, right? Being physically fit means being able to handle physical pressure. So what you want to do is you want to create a way of riding every day that engages your mind grows your emotional fitness, looks for the things that you need to be working on. Ride in the ring at home the way you want to ride in the ring at the show. You start practicing that and preparing for that. It's all about preparation because nothing happens in a show that's a surprise. Is it surprising when you get to a horse show and your horse spooks? Is it surprising when you get to a horse show and you forget the test? When you have a reader? <laughs> It's not. I've seen it too. Thank God London's not here to scream about that. Right? No readers! Know your text. Prepare. Prepare your mind.
Thank you for watching. Join us again for our next episode of Shop Talk.